So today we're talking about communities. That's section one. And we already know what communities are because we spoke about that in chapter two. Inside this section, we are first going to talk about communities and limiting factors. Uh, then we are going to talk about tolerance. And we're going to talk about primary and secondary succession. Lastly, we're going to talk about climax communities. Are you guys ready? Yes. Well, let's go. Communities. A community is made up of several populations that interact. All right. Remember, we start with organisms and then populations, and then we go to communities. So we're talking about multiple populations. Uh, they interact in such a way that if you change one, you affect the other. So if there's a change in one population of a community, that will cause a change in another population, especially if there's a tight relationship between those populations. Limiting factors. What are limiting factors? A limiting factor is any biotic. What does biotic mean again? Alive, Alive living. Okay, and abiotic means non-living. Okay, not, not just dead, because if you have a dead person, that's not a abiotic factor. Um, but anyhow, uh, limiting factor is any biotic or abiotic factor that restricts, that's the key word right there, restricts the existence, numbers, reproduction, or distribution of organisms. So anything that can restrict the amount of individuals in a certain population, that is considered to be a limiting factor. Examples, predators, temperature, food availability, and moisture. Those are some examples of limiting factors. So those are limiting factors. When we're talking about ranges of tolerance, what does the word tolerance usually refer to? Tolerate. To tolerate. What does tolerate mean? Sorry, put, up with. put up with, right? You can withstand something. Um, when we're talking about ra ranges of tolerance, uh, it's the, it refers to an organism's ability to, the key word that you just said, withstand fluctuations in biotic and abiotic environmental factors. What are fluctuations? Changes, changes right? Okay, so you have changes in, in environment and uh, these different types of environments, different types of organisms are going to be able to withstand those changes. All right, if you have a freshwater fish, and you w move it to salt water, what's going to happen? Gonna it's going to die. Why? <laughs> because it's a fresh water fish. Good answer. Because it can't withstand that type of a change. All right? So we'll talk about different ranges of tolerances as we go on. Um, organisms, for example, deep in the sea have a higher tolerance for lack of sun because you're deep down in the sea. There's not, not a lot of sunlight and high amounts of pressure than other aquatic organisms. If there's an organism that lives deep down, deep down in the ocean that deep, you need to be able to withstand this high pressure and also uh, lack of sunlight. Does that make sense? Does that make sense? Yes. OK, sweet. OK, I have a video to illustrate that. More than two kilometers down in the depths of the Pacific Ocean, where no light can penetrate and where the pressures exceed 200 atmospheres, marine biologists discovered an unusual community of animals. They identified 300 new species that rely on the life-giving deep sea rifts in the ocean floor that spew out extremely hot water with inorganic sulfur compounds. Living within the gills of these brightly colored tube worms are chemosynthetic bacteria that use the sulfur to supply this sunless community of eyeless crabs, unusual fishes, yellow mussels, and tube worms with energy. Now we're going to talk about succession. Uh, succession, when we're talking about succession, what we're talking about, well, I said talking about a lot in that one sentence. Uh, succession is the orderly and natural changes that take place in communities of an ecosystem. Uh, it, it occurs in stages. Uh, different species at different stages make conditions that are suitable for the following species. So you have a certain community. 
Um, it's left untouched for a while, maybe, or maybe it's not even left untouched. But whatever happens, there's some orderly changes that happen. Um, one species comes in, and because that species is there, it makes it possible for other species to come in. And we're going to look at examples of how that happens. Succession is often hard to observe because it takes years to happen. Okay, how many people have been to my house before? Or my yard? or anything of that sort, okay? So we have a lot of people here that has been to my house or yard before. What is in my yard? Grass. 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 Okay, so we have a lawn. We have a lawn. What, carpet? Fire pit. Oh, fire pit. Yeah, we do have a fire pit there. So we have a lawn. Um, we also have some trees. Now, let's say Mr. Samuel just stopped caring. And he said, you know what? I am no longer going to mow my lawn. I am tired of this whole keeping up with the Joneses thing. I don't care about mowing my lawn. What's going to happen? It's going to go. Okay, so the grass is going to start growing. Eventually, what's going to happen to the grass and what's there? It's going to cover my house. That's some big grass. I don't think the grass is going to cover my house. So what's going to happen? The grass is going to get tall. Eventually, we're going to start getting what? Weeds. Okay, so weeds are going to start coming in. Um, do we like weeds in our lawns? No. Okay, but I don't care anymore about keeping up, keeping up with the Joneses. I don't care about the weeds in my lawn. I keep it there for another few months and even years. What's going to happen eventually? Okay, so losing some color, losing grass, and we get bushes and shrubs. A giraffe. Whoa, that'd be pretty sweet. Maybe I should do this whole not mowing the lawn thing. If I'm going to get a giraffe, I kind of want that. All right, so, so I don't mow it for a while. Eventually, I see some weeds. Then you guys said, eventually, I see some shrubs and some bushes and so on. Eventually, what's going to, and giraffes, of course. Eventually, what's going to happen is I'm going to start getting bigger plants. And eventually, if I leave this for many, many, many years, 50 plus years and so on, we'll even start seeing some trees. All right, so what happens there is um, by just leaving it untouched, there's some natural changes that are going to happen. And every time you have a certain species that comes in, that makes it possible for other species to come in. Does that make sense? Yeah. Now, there are two types of succession. We have primary succession and we have secondary succession. Uh, we're going to talk about primary first uh -huh, because it's primary. And then we're going to talk about secondary second, because it's secondary. <laughs> okay, <laughs> primary succession. Uh, that occurs when a community is formed from building on rocks. Okay, so this is very primitive. We're starting not from Mr. Samuel's lawn. We're starting from rocks. And when we have primary succession, uh, pioneer species are what we call the first species to appear. Now, are there many different things that can live on rocks? Yeah. On just rocks? They're just there on the rocks and they can survive? Yeah. Turtles. Huh. Turtles? So they feed on the rocks and all that kind of stuff. Moss. Yeah. Moss? I heard, I heard some moss. And what did you say in the back there? Lichens. And we're going to talk about lichens today. We're going to talk about that in a little while. So this is primary species. Primary, I mean, primary succession. We're talking with starting on rocks. Now, when we're talking about secondary succession, this occurs after a natural disaster or some type of man-made structure that is abandoned. So, for example, um, when I abandon my yard, I don't want to mow it anymore. This, we're dealing with secondary succession. It's not starting on rocks. Um, so there are things there that makes it easier for this type of thing to happen. All right, now let's talk about this some more. Uh, if there's a forest fire, okay, say we have a forest. We have a fire now that comes, it burns down the trees, it burns the grasses and um, bushes and so on that's there, and everything is pretty much gone. All right? There is still soil, right or wrong? And because there's soil, that makes it easy, easier for little plants to grow and so on, whereas in primary succession, is it easy for a plant to grow on a rock? 
I saw this one commercial, though, and I don't know how it works, with this type of grass that you can grow. Um, it grows so well that you could even grow it on, like, tile. You just put the seeds down. Uh, what was it called? True green or something like that? I don't know how it works. I don't know how well it works, but anyhow, uh, soil is already present, so you don't have to go all the way back to the pioneer stage. You don't need pioneer species because we already have soil. Question? It, well, you, you, some, you get nutrients that are broken down from the trees and so on, and you do have some nutrients in the soil, which, again, that makes it um, easier for plants to grow and so on, especially much easier than if we're dealing with primary succession. Okay, what is this here? Okay, that is actually a volcano. We have a, a volcano that's erupting. What is coming out of the volcano? Lava, okay, so you have lava that comes out of the volcano. The lava comes out and it can destroy a community. What happens after a while when the, vo the, the volcano um, is no longer erupting, the lava has been on the ground for a while, what happens to the lava? It cools down, it cools down and it becomes rock. rock. Okay, so now we have a new community where we have rock. What kind of succession would we have in this kind of uh, situation? What kind of succession? Primary or secondary succession? Primary. Yeah, if you say both of them, yeah, one of them will be right. But which one is right? Primary, primary succession, right? We're starting on rock, uh, so that is primary succession. Um, secondary succession, we have a forest fire. It burns down the trees and so on, but there's already soil present, so the soil can make it easier for plants to grow and for other organisms to come into that environment. Now let's look a little more at this pioneer species concept that we started talking about. Um, and Jean mentioned lichens. What are lichens? Lichens are a combination of two entirely different species. So we have two species that live in a symbiotic relationship that demands the other for survival. So they, they survive off of each other. What type of a symbiotic relationship is that? Mutualism, Mutualism right? It, they are composed of fungus and algae. And this is how the relationship works. No, I'm not going to say the fungi joke, so you don't have to worry, ab you don't have to worry about that. Um, this, is how, this is how the relationship works. The fungus receives food from the algae, and the algae receives moisture from the fungus. Okay, So this is a, a beneficial relationship for both of them and that causes them to survive. Now, what happens then is the lichens then help cause the rocks to weather faster, so it causes the rocks to break down faster, and thus helps start the production of soil. Okay, so we have the lichens, the re relationship between the fungus and algae. They can grow on rocks. The fungus gets food from the algae. The algae gets moisture from the fungus. And be, as they're living on the rocks, they break down the rocks and we form soil. Once we have soil, what can we get? Life. We can get life. We can get plants. We can, uh, we can get grasses and small plants. And eventually, we can go into all different types of species appearing. So that's how that process works. If I ask you for an example of a pioneer species, you can tell me a lichen. You can tell me that it's made up of fungus and algae in a mutualistic relationship where they both benefit. Climax community. Is this the last slide? Yeah. This is the last slide for this section. What is a climax community? A climax community is when a community has reached a level of stability and undergoes little or no change. So if Mr. Samuel decides to be the terrible homemaker and he does not mow the lawn, you, you get grasses, you get shrubs, you eventually get trees, and um, eventually, oh, giraffes, I'm sorry. <laughs> I keep forgetting to <laughs> include these giraffes. Um, we get all these things. Eventually, it's going to reach a period of stability where there's little or no change. Maybe we have a forest in my yard or something. A jungle. Or a jungle, right? Okay, in review, in review, we have uh, looked at communities and limiting factors. 
we have spoken about tolerance, then we spoke about primary and secondary succession, and lastly, we spoke about climax communities. <laughs>